In the last lecture, we performed the conversion of delta network to y network, and now in this lecture, we want to perform the conversion of y network to delta network. This means we have the y network, and therefore we know R1, R2, and R3. And now we want to transform this y network to this delta network. That is, we want to obtain R A, R B, and R C in terms of R one, R two, and R three. And I will first give you the formulas, and then we will derive them. All the three resistors of the delta network R A, R B, and R C, R A, R B, and R C. Are equal to the sum of all possible products of y resistors taken two at a time divided by the opposite resistor. So let us try to understand what do we mean by the sum of all possible products of y resistors taken two at a time. When you look at the y network, you will find we have three resistors R1, R2, and the third one is R3. Now we want to have the all possible products of Y resistors, that is R1, R2, and R3, taking two at a time. So let's take R1 and R2. This will give us R1 multiplied to R2. The next possibility is R2 multiplied with R3. R2 multiplied with R3 and the last possibility is R3 multiplied with R1. R3 multiplied with R1. So these are the three possible product terms in which we have taken two Y resistors at a time. And then we want to have the sum of these product terms. So we will add them. And this is what we will have in the numerator of all R A, R B and R C. So let us copy this part and we will have it for R B and also for R C. Now in the next line it says we have to divide it by the opposite Y resistor. When you look at resistor RA, you will find the opposite Y resistor is R2. Opposite to RA, we have R2. So we will divide by R2. For RB, opposite resistor for Y network is R3. And for RC, opposite resistor in Y network is R1. So these are the conversion formulas when we want to convert Y network to delta network and we know how to remember the formulas and there is one point which you should note down. The pattern of the formulas will remain same when we have inductances and also when we have impedances. So for resistors inductors and impedances we have the same pattern of formulas and now we are going to prove them we are going to derive r a r b and r c now in the last lecture if you remember we obtained r1 r2 and r3 in terms of r a r b and r c there we had the delta network and we wanted to have the y network and for the conversion of delta to y we derived these formulas let's say this is equation number one this is equation number two and this is equation number three and i want to multiply equation number one and equation number two let's multiply one and two this will give us R1 multiplied to R2 on the left hand side and on the right hand side we will have RA RB square RC divided by RA 
plus R B plus R C whole square. Let's call this equation number 4. Now after this, we will multiply equation number 2 and equation number 3. Equation number 2 multiplied with equation number 3 and it will give us R2 multiplied to R3 on the left hand side and on the right hand side we will have R A multiplied to R B multiplied to R C square divided by R A plus R B plus R C whole square. Let's call this equation number 5. Now we will multiply equation number 1 and equation number 3. 1 multiplied with 3 and this will give us R1 multiplied to R3 equal to R A square R B R C divided by R A plus R B plus R C whole square. Let's call this equation number 6. And now we will add fourth equation, fifth equation and the sixth equation together and this will give us R1 R2 plus R2 R3 plus R1 R3 on the left hand side and on the right hand side we will have RA plus RB plus RC whole square as the LCM. So in denominator we will have RA plus RB plus RC whole square and in the numerator we will have RA RB square RC plus RA RB RC square RA RB RC square and then we have R A square R B R C from the sixth equation R A square R B R C and you can notice one thing that in all the terms of numerator we have R A R B R C common so we can take R A R B R C common and in this term after taking R A R B R C common we are left with R B in this term we are left with RC and in this term we are left with RA. Therefore in the next step we will have R1 R2 plus R2 R3 plus R3 R1 we can write R1 R3 as R3 R1 equal to RA RB RC inside the bracket we will have R A plus R B plus R C divided by R A plus R B plus R C square. Now it is clear that R A plus R B plus R C in numerator will cancel out with R A plus R B plus R C in denominator. So we are left with R1 R2 plus R2 R3 plus R3 R1 equal to R A R B R C divided by R A plus R B plus R C. Let's call this equation number 7. This is equation number 7 and now we will divide equation number 7 by equation number 1. So let us divide equation number 7 by equation number 1. You can see equation number 1 here and on the left hand side we will have R1 R2 plus R2 R3 plus R3 R1 divided by R1 you can see we have R1 on the left hand side of equation 1 and on the right hand side we will have RA RB RC divided by RA plus RB plus RC divided by 
R A R B divided by R A plus R B plus R C. So we have R A R B divided by R A plus R B plus R C. Now you can see that R A plus R B plus R C will cancel out. R A R B will cancel out, and finally we are left with R one R two plus R two R three plus R three R one divided by R one equal to R C. So now we have obtained R C, and you can compare R C from here, and you will find we have obtained the correct result. And when you divide equation number seven. By equation number two, you will get R A. When you divide equation number seven by equation number three, you will get R B. So in this way, we can derive these results. And like in the previous lecture, the derivation is not very important. The important thing is result. So remember these formulas as we will use them in the coming lectures.